What's going on guys? So if you follow us on Instagram, you know that we ran into a bit of luck this weekend, tripling up, filling all of our tags for Turkey and opening weekend. We've got a lot of really awesome footage that we're looking forward to dropping for you guys soon, but we're still working through editing and things like that, so stay tuned. It's gonna be a lot of good content coming your way. But before we drop that video, we wanted to get ready for fishing season a little bit. As anybody in Wisconsin knows, that this Saturday, May 1st, is our opening weekend for fishing. So things like walleye, pike, all open up this weekend, but notably for me, it's also the opener for trout season. Now there's a lot of early season streams that are out there, um, but a few of my more favorite streams aren't open for that early season, so this is my first opportunity to get after them. So before I head out, I was looking through my spinner collection knowing that I'm running a little dry. And I don't know how many other people out there make their own spinners, but I personally do. And I thought it might be interesting to some people to see how I do that. So I wanted to make a quick video to run through what kind of equipment you need, what kind of equipment I have, and then the kind of things like weights, blades, things like that that I use for trout. So stay tuned, I'll show you a quick rundown of the gear that I use, and then also show you how I go about making spinners and what color combinations work for me. So the main components that you're gonna need when you're making spinners is you're gonna need some wire, you're gonna need some bodies to give it some weight to help it dive, you're gonna need blades, and you're gonna need some hooks. So the most notable part of a spinner is obviously the blade. And you can see here I've got a hell of an assortment. Um, I've got different sizes, different styles, they all kind of serve the different purposes. I'll dive into a little bit more of what the strengths, weaknesses of are of each. Um, but you can also see that I've got these labeled and that's because from different suppliers, I've noticed that their sizing criteria is a little bit different. And so I've had to do largely just kind of guess and check to figure out who has the right stuff for what. But for the most part, you can see that I've just got a little bit of different sizes of the Colorado blades, which are kind of your standard walleye blade You'll see these a lot on like crawler harnesses, things like that. Um, these ones I really like, they're good for getting a lot of lifts. So these will get heavy weights up towards the surface. And they're also good for really slow retrievals. And I found sometimes when they're a little finicky that they'll bite on these just because I can pull them back a little bit slower and it gives them an opportunity to grab it a little quicker. Similar to those, we also have French blades. Again, I've got different colors and sizes and shapes, but French blades are kind of uh, similar to the Colorado in that you're gonna get a lot of lift, but they also do dive a little bit more. You'll see that these are more like kind of your MEP style is what you're gonna see. Next to that, we've got a lot of inline blades. Inline blades are similar to your Panther Martins and those kind of styles. Um, you also see some, some rooster tails that are like these, but these are really good. Um, what I like these for is that if you're doing a lot of like dinking, dunking, like in small streams, these are really great for quick spinning. So basically they'll hit the water and they're gonna start spinning almost immediately on your first crank of the handle. The Colorados and the Frenches take a few spins of the handle to get them really going. Whereas these inlines, they'll start spinning almost immediately. So if you're just doing little short four or five foot casts, these are really great for those kinds of situations. Similar to that, we also have just plain willow blades like these. And what these are good for is again, they spin really easy. So you're gonna get them spinning right away. And they're also good for diving really deep. So if you don't wanna use a lot of weight, but you still wanna get them down towards the bottom, these are really great for that. I actually haven't used a lot of willows. Um, I just picked these blades up recently. So I'm gonna spin some of those up today to kind of give them a shot. Now to mount blades, when you're using things like the inline, you can see that the wire just goes straight through the hole right there. And then they just mount directly there and you don't need a clevis or anything like that. If you're using any of the other styles, you do need to use what's called a clevis. And these clevises are just basically little pins or little hoops that attach to the blade and then go onto the wire. And that allows them to spin. When you're using clevises or even the inlines, you need to have some kind of bearing. And I've got two different styles of beads here. Most of the beads that you're gonna find in manufactured uh, spinners are gonna be hollow. And the thing with hollow is they're eventually gonna wear out. So if by chance you have a spinner that lasts a long time, they're gonna eventually start to wear out and it's just not gonna spin the same. So below your blades, I highly recommend going with a solid bead like these. Um, they're just a little tougher, a lot more durable. You're gonna get a lot more life out of your spinners like that. Um, I like to kind of make new ones all the time, so I'm constantly dissecting, but it's still really good to have if you want something with a little bit of longevity. For bodies, you can see that there's a lot of different assortments I have. I have these all sorted by weights and things like that. I generally never go above eighth of an ounce. These are some tungsten weights here that I'm actually a big fan of. Um, I'll get to beads here in a second, but tungsten weights, they're small and they're heavy. So they're really good for a low profile and they'll help you dive deeper. But I also have some brass weights, um, different combinations of these. And as you play around, you're gonna get a little bit more familiar with them. 
but there's some brass baits. They all kind of serve their purpose. They have a little bit different styles to all of them. Um, I also have different paints and things like that. So I generally get these plain brass and then I'll paint like this one is black here. Beyond the body, I also use some of these tungsten beads here too. Um, getting your balance right on spinners can be tricky sometimes. And so tungsten beads like these are really great for that. Um, you can add a little bit more weight to the back and they also add a little bit more shine, which I kind of like. I've just started playing around with those a bit more. Perhaps the most important part after the blade, I would say is gonna be your hooks. Um, I used to go with cheaper hooks and now I strictly use Gamagatsus. Um, they're sharper, they're more durable. I like that they're painted red like these. I primarily use size eights, size sixes, and size fours for everything. The size fours are giant. Um, those will come along a little bit later in the season. I'll get into like the sizing and things like that, but later in the season, you can use these big honking size fours, and that's good for catching some of your bigger fish. You'll get a good hook set into those. You'll see that I have some that are dressed up here. Um, if there's enough of you guys who want to see me, how I kind of tie these up, I'll be happy to make another video, but there are plenty of fly tying videos out there who are guaranteed are much, much stronger at it than I am. But I like dressing up my hooks a little bit. I used to use just kind of tubes and stuff like that, but they end up falling apart. So I just tie on some of this like, I don't know, the jig skirt material, and it seems to hold up really well. I can get a long life out of that, and I really enjoy them. Now beads are not necessarily a necessity, but I like them because they add a little bit of color and they add a lot of flash. Like you can see the light reflecting off it right now. They really add a lot of sheen in the water. I like using glass beads for that reason. They also add a little bit of vibration. So as things are kind of bounce, bouncing around in there, when metal is hitting this glass, it really makes like a clacking sound. And I think the fish really like that. Um, really, this is the only color besides like some of the paints that I use that I add to baits. Other than that, you can really get away with just using plain nickel and plain brass and the fish will go crazy. The biggest thing that's going to lure them in is going to be your blade. So the colors, some people say it doesn't really matter, but I like doing it. I think it looks better and I've had success with it. So this is just a cheap kit that I got off of Amazon. Um, I think it was like 15 bucks for all of these beads. So it's cheap enough and easy enough to put on there. Now, wire is one of the things that I think kind of separates making your own spinners from what you're going to get in the store. Um, most stores are going to use, or store-bought spinners are going to use wire that's like 0.024 or smaller inches. And what I found with those is they bend, especially on bigger fish or when you're trying to horse fish out of wood and things like that. I find that it kind of bends. So what I like to use is 0.031 wire. It's a little bit thicker. And this holds up really well to big fish. I don't think I've ever had this wire bend on me. Again, this is just gonna add some longevity to your spinners to make sure that you're gonna get more than a few uses out of them, especially when you're paying the money that you are in like a Panther Martin or something like that. If you're gonna make them, make them once and make them right. The tools that you're gonna need is you're gonna need a good tin snip, something that can tip close to the tip here. Um, you're gonna be able to like get close to the wire. You'll see what I mean here in a second. But it just helps getting a clean cut and making your spinners look nice. The last tool that I use is a Twist Tech wire former. Um, this is the Magnum edition. You can use just round uh, needle nose pliers. That's what a lot of people do. And keep in mind, these don't need to be perfect. As long as the blade spins, fish are gonna hit it. Um, if you're worried more about aesthetics, I highly recommend getting a system like this. Um, this particular model is made for larger fish like musky and northern pike lures if you're making big buzz baits. Um, unfortunately, it was the only one in stock when these were available. And so I went with that and I actually had used my 3D printer to modify it a little bit. So that piece right there I had modified with my 3D printer and then I just used some coat hangers actually to use for the actual pegs. And I'll show you what those all kind of mean here in a second and why that's relevant. But basically what was happening when I was using the stock parts for this is I was getting huge loops on either end of my spinners and they just looked kind of gaudy. And so I modified it a little bit. It's worked great for me so far. It's not ideal, but it does work. And I still have the option to use it for musky baits or other large buzz baits if I feel like it in the future. But without all that said, let's start spinning some spinners. All right, so to get started, you need to cut yourself a piece of wire. Um, you usually can start with like three to four inches of the wire. Just cut a piece off and I'll show you how we twist that up to make our loop. Just cut that really quick, just the wire side. Another thing that I think is kind of key when I'm doing this is I stay organized. I try to whip out about a dozen at a time. Um, if you have things in the right place, it really makes things go smoother. So to start off to make your loop, just gonna take this and we go maybe about an inch past uh, this, I guess, little round piece there that I had printed. Um, there's a little seat within this hook here that the wire will sit in. So what you do 
get it and you'll feel it kind of grab there. Just kind of spin around and you're going to wrap that around. I'm trying to get my hands out of the way here. And you're going to go all the way around and then I'm just going to go a little bit past that. And you see what I'm trying to do is to get that, that uh, loop right in line with the uh, wire. So I just kind of go around like that. See, that's what the wire looks like right there. Put my hand behind it. you loop like that. Then what you do is there's a slot here on the end and you feed that onto your hook right there. There's another slot that fits right into here. You're just gonna pull the wire back and hit that. And with a little bit of tension right here, you're just gonna spin that. You spin, 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 to your click, and another click. And you can see that's wrapped up into a nice loop there. So now that you got that in place, that's gonna be the top of my spinner. So it's gonna sit like this, I suppose. And don't worry, you can see that's a little crooked. It's not really the end of the world. You can bend it when you're finished. So now what I do is I typically, like I said, those hollow beads aren't really my favorite, but I like using them on, on the top here because you can see there's a little bit of a tag right there. And I've found that, that sometimes once it gets stuck into the hole, in particular of the inline blades. And so I'll throw a hollow bead on top. And that lets me just kind of get a little bit more freedom. I have a little bit more confidence that the blade will spin every time. So I'll start with, Oh, what color do I want to go with here? We're going to start with the silver, I think. So look for a silver hollow bead. Feed that on. And why not this round we'll go with the big silver inline. So silver inline blade. Right on there, hollow bead above that. Now below that, like I said, the bearing bead. I want it to be solid, so that way it's gonna live up to a lot of spinning, things like that. So, take one of my larger silvers here, and I'll feed that on like that. Now there's a lot of classic color combinations out there, um, particularly if you think of like Panther Martins have always been my favorite for trout. Um, the black and yellow, red and yellow um, are always the hot colors. Uh, another color combination that I'm really fond of is orange and green. It was a really great combination for me last year, so that's what I'm going to go with on this one. So, what I'm going to do, first I'm going to throw on just one of these glass bleach beads. I'm going to start with an orange one. So I'm going to go with, oh actually, why don't I go with green on this? And for those of you who don't know, I am colorblind, so a lot of this is a guessing game. Make fun of me in the comments if I'm getting the colors wrong. But I go with a green bead, orange eighth ounce body for this one. And this is a number five spinner blade here. And then I'm gonna throw one more green bead below that. So now you can see I've got silver inline blade, solid bead. Then I've got a glass bead, my tungsten body there, and another glass bead below that. Now I'm ready to put on my hook. So. To tie that final loop, I'm gonna leave a little bit hanging off the edge. So you can see I'm about an inch from the center there. I'll start there. And I'm just gonna loop that around the same way that I did for the loop on the top. I'm actually gonna give a little bit more, so maybe closer to like an inch and a half. This isn't as par like particular to get it the length right or anything, but again, just a little bit past all the way so it's nice and straight. And you can see I got that big piece of tag line. You really only need maybe an inch of that tag line to wrap around. So. I'll trim that off really quick. Something like that. And then I'm gonna take my hook. I if I can get it out of there. And you feed it on just like that. Once you get your hook on there, it's the same setup as you did before. The only difference is you have the hook in the way. And this is where the stock one is nice because they actually have a little notch in there that gives you room for the hook to go in. Um, I find it works all right like this. It just takes a little bit of uh, finagling, but fit it on just like you did before. Just fits into that slot. And then you're just gonna do pressure and spin. Here, one click, a couple more clicks. Pull that out of there. And there you go. That is one completed spinner. So that's with a size five blade, about an eighth of an ounce. That's pretty standard. Um, this one's probably gonna run pretty shallow. I do a lot of guess and check while I'm doing this. Um, I don't have a formula, but I do know it's about balance. You can't have too much weight in the front, too much in the back. And so that's why I have a bead above, a bead below. Um, this one should be nice and centered. It should run pretty shallow, but also run deep if I needed to too. 
Also a fairly small profile, which again, should work well for this early. So that's one inline. Let's do one of the larger Colorados now. So same deal as before. Grab some wire here. I don't know, about four inches there. and a half of overhang, loop it around. And we'll tighten it down. Then again, I'll go with a hollow bead above that. I'm gonna go with gold this time. So again, hollow bead. Now is when a clevis is gonna have to come into play. So, for the weight I'm gonna use here, I like using size three and a half blades. Um, that's kind of been the standard I've gone with. Um, again, play around. Um, I do have some size fours too. I don't use them as often, but three and a half seems to be about the wheelhouse. So I guess I just whipped through that. But to feed that on, you're just gonna feed your clevis through the hole on your spinner and make sure it's the right direction. You want the cup convex pointed down or concave pointing down, I'm sorry and then you just feed it on just like normal like that. Then same drill, we're gonna go with a solid bead below that. And on this one, oh, what color? I think I'm gonna go with kind of a crayfish style deal on this one. So I'm gonna use red. I've got gold bodies, which should be close enough. It's not really ideal for crayfish, but the tail is really colored well for it. But with red, gold, so we've got so far. Again, I'm gonna twist that. Move it fast. Oh, almost forgot. That's a common mistake I've done before. Twisted it without the hook on yet. So, again with these, I'm gonna use a size, uh, I think these are size six hooks. I do have some size fours in there, which would probably be more appropriate for these size blades. But again, early in the year, size uh, sixes should work fine. And they should work fine for most of the fish that you're gonna run into. But, actually, I'm gonna take some of the tag end off of this one. Uh, this is the tricky part. You can see I kind of pry the wire back like that. Kind of lets it fit on there a little bit smoother. But wheel that on in the slot, a little pressure, and then spin. You only really need two wraps if you're doing this with the pliers. It'd be a pain to go more than that, but two should be just fine. You see, there you go. That's one Colorado blade, uh, crayfish color. And that should spin great, yep. Nice and slow retrieval on these, I really am a big fan. Um, sometimes, a lot of people say like the bottom of the blade here should match up at the bottom of like your body. Um, I've kind of been able to play around with that and get away with it, but I guess in some cases I have added more beads down to the bottom there. It really depends on the, your weight, what you're looking to do. If you need to get deeper, that's a good way to go about it. Some of the streams I'm going to are fairly shallow, so I don't really need that depth. So we will do one more here, the French for you guys. Um, actually, I'm gonna do a gold again, I think. So, piece of wire. Spin that up. Again, same system, we'll go with a hollow bead. Gold bead. Again, you have to add a clevis for these. So, and clevises size don't really matter. Um, most of the websites have guidelines and things like that and where you can find them. So. Check those out, you'll see what you need. 
There's a lot of different vendors out there. Um, Lure Parts Online is a good one. Fisherman Shack I like for their blades. Uh, Jan's Netcraft has some good stuff and so does Barlow's Tackle. I kind of buy a little bit from everyone. It's a little frustrating. I haven't found a good like one-stop shop for everything, but this is a good way to find, I don't know, a little bit of everything all over and you'll build your collection as you keep going and finding out what you like from where. So, got my blade on, I have a solid bead. Bead, and I'm gonna switch it up on the body this time. I'm gonna go with a black 16th ounce body there. And I'm gonna add some beads in between. So, I'm gonna go with yellow in the middle. And then because that's just a 16th ounce, I'm gonna add one of these black tungsten beads. And these are used for fly making, but I found that they're pretty good for these. I actually really enjoy them. And then I'm gonna go with yellow again. Again, kind of a classic color combination if you've seen spinners out there. This is basically kind of my go-to any other time of the year. So, now that I got that down. Spin that around. Trim it up. Now I'm gonna take my hook, and you guys might get a kick out of these. Um, from the turkeys that we shot this weekend, I actually took some of the feathers off of that, and that's what I tied some of these flies. So I got some of that skirt material, and then I also got some of the fuzzier. These were the feathers from behind the tail, and they're really puffy, and I really like that. So I hang on to those, I'll spin those up. Again, I am not an expert at all at tying these things, but everything stays where it should. They look good enough to conceal the hook. I do think that that matters, um, if you can kind of hide the hook. I think. When it looks like that, it gives the fish an idea that they're grabbing onto something rather than just shooting for like the blade that they think is the the lure. This way they're kind of grabbing onto that thing because a bug, a fly. I don't really know what they're thinking, but I do find it helps to kind of conceal that hook. So pop that on there. Scoot over. And this one. There you go. That one I'm actually a really big fan of. I like the way that one looks. So, French blade. So, get this over on the big camera here. You can see that we've got French blade that I just hung up, strung up here. You can see kind of where the blade falls on the body and everything like that. It's got great colors. Um, kind of that same classic black and yellow color combination is always a good one, especially early season. One that's gonna be kind of a crayfish, so this is kind of gold and red, and then I got some browns in there and things like that. Um, when that's paired with like gold or copper, apparently that's supposed to look like a crayfish, and I know that they feed on crayfish hard where I'm going, so that should be a good one. And then the classic orange and green that I use for that. So I'm gonna spin up a few more of these. Uh, you'll see them in action this weekend. I'm heading out Saturday morning. Hopefully I'm gonna have a bunch of good footage and get into some brook trout for you guys. Um, if you have any questions or want me to do any more videos of how I make these, still working on crankbaits and things like that, but if you guys want to see more, leave a comment. I'll be happy. Also, keep an eye out for our socials. We're always posting on there. Things like what we're doing each weekend. We're going to get out fishing hard here now that the summer is here. Um, and also going to have some turkey hunting videos for you here real soon. We've also got a few more tags for that too, so hopefully we can get into a couple more birds. On that, stay tuned to the channel, guys. I appreciate you guys watching, and let me know what you think.